Hello everybody and welcome to today's ecology class. My name is Divna and for today's lecture we have genetically defined this topic and we're going to talk about plasticity and canalization. Those two terms are genetically related but we're going to talk in the context of the ecology so we can start. Let's start with plasticity. Plasticity in the context of the response to environmental factors is uh, uh, regarding to the thermo as components of sets of traits which are predictably related to habitat stability and productivity. What this means is that plasticity is basically explaining how an organism will adapt to different changes in their environment, how it is going to adapt. So in the terms of plasticity we have two types. Plasticity can be phenotypic or genotypic. So just to be sure you are uh, familiar with these two terms, so genotype is a set of genes that are inherited for, from parents, and then phenotype is the genes, the set of genes you already have by birth, and then they are influenced by the environment you are living in, and that's how you get the, the phenotype. So genotype is our pure genes and then phenotype is genes plus the influence of the environment. So dependent of those two, uh, plasticity can be expressed in genes or they can be purely phenotypic. So phenotypic is something that it's gained through life, let's call it like that, or learned. So when we talk about plasticity, we rather talk about phenotypic than genotypic because genotypic is something that it can be more talked about through evolution. And so on. Today we're going to talk about more about phenotypic plasticity. So, as phenotypic plasticity uh, by Pellucci is defined as the ability of individual genotypes to produce different phenotypes when exposed to different environmental conditions. This means that a single set of, of genes, so genotype, has to be able to express in different ways dependent on the environmental conditions. Basically, the single species or a single individual needs to be able to adapt in different conditions. Good examples to understand these are acclimation or the immune system, as, as mentioned here. So acclimation is adaptation to changes in the temperature uh, in the area the, the organism lives in, or the immune system changes dependent on the, of course, microbial set of the environment. So if, if the same species spend some time in the different surrounding with a different microbiotic uh, assemblage, they're going to adapt to its pressure and uh, express uh, different uh, adaptations of its immune system. When we also mentioned learning, and then learning is a bit questionable because there is a big discussion uh, among scientists whether or not it is transmitted to next generations. Discussion is in the area of whether if I learn something in my life, am I able to pass it on to the next generation of it? of my species to my offspring. So it's not really clear if we can talk about learning as the ability toxicity and change. It's it's open for a discussion. So to go back to phenotypic plasticity in general, even though it's called learned, it's basically defined as the fitness of a species, its changeability, but it is limited by, by energy. You, you need a certain input of it to be able to adapt. And this is the main problem we have with the environment in the past century. Uh, the global changes we are witnessing in, in the weather conditions and onwards is exactly this. So there were always present in, in, in on the earth different changes in the environment. But what in the first 21st and 20th century compared to the uh, history of planet 
is that the changes are happening too fast uh, and uh, living organisms are not uh, fit enough to cope with them so the, cope with the speed of, of, of their happening the temperature is rising too fast and, and animals for example are not they don't have time to uh, express their genes in different way in a matter of, of adaptations to new weather conditions so they're instead of being a um, slow factor of change of their physiology or anatomy and onwards the change of temperature because being quick they are directly killing uh, an organism instead of being a reason to of adaptation or its influence on genes to express in a different way to change they are di directly providing huge mortality rate onwards this is a nice scheme of, of understanding to go back to the geno genotypic and phenotypic but plasticity in general so you have a genotype on the bottom of this pyramid let's call it like that so we have a, a, a set of chromosomes and then so that set of chromosome is from your mother and your father and then you'll get the, the gene interaction which which would be your set of genes you're born with but then they are getting influenced by environment by every day everything you do whatever you are interacting with and living in it is all influencing the the gene and then those interactions can be explained as a phenotype so you have a specific phenotype of your own or a good example of it is a personality so uh, twins if you have twins completely the same twins identical ones they have identical set of genes but they are then again different pers persons different personalities different habits and liking and disliking and so onwards so that would be their phenotype so the same genes expressed with different environments and then uh, shown on the surface as phenotype so that could be so phenotype and then at some point the phenotype is after some generations can be called the adaptability of a species but then at some point maybe eventually after a few generations it can be put in the in the core of the species in back into the genes and pass on the next to the next generations so that's how the species are basically adapting so at first it's just a surface phenotypic adaptations but if it stays long enough which means that the adaptation is well it's doing good their job in helping species to survive it get it gets into the the genes and that's how it's abling uh, to pass on to the offsprings and be taken as a, a new basics of a species their their basic feature so as well the good uh, way to understand that are these graphs that are called normal reaction and they're expressing the genotype per environment through plasticity so you have a genotype per environment is shown as the plasticity here three possible scenarios so at first scenario there is no plasticity which means that genes are not influenced by environment at all it can be a species perfectly adapted to its environment in theory but in practice obviously it's not possible to meet in the nature so there's no plasticity nothing is changing the genes are the way they are then doing the perfect role in keeping the species alive in the certain environment the second scenario will be is present, which means that genes are reacting to the changing envir environment. The certain pressure is present, and the genes do need to change. In the beginning, they are shown through plasticity, so the organisms are changing as a response to the changes in the environment. So adaptation, basically. And then you have the third possible option: is that the environmental pressure is high conditions are changing severely and then you have what's called highly variable plasticity 
with this strong genotype by environmental interaction. So the phenoty phenotypic plasticity is high. So the plasticity is strong and genes and are changing because the environmental pressure is really strong. They are all re related. This is a nice way to get the idea in the real life how it looks like. Uh, plants are always a good uh, way to demonstrate changes in um, in physiology or genetics, etc., as the a result of environmental pressure and how to they adapt to it because uh, animals and maybe some other organisms do have ability to change the environment in their favor they have ability to use locomotion as a as a response to non-fitting environment but then plants do not have those abilities the only way they can cope with the changes in their environment is to to change with with it to adapt to it so good um, example of it is heterophily heterophily is the ability of a single plant to have different types of leaves on a single plant which you can obviously see here this is a, a random aquatic plant which means that it lives in water so upper part is above the water the down part of the plant is submerged and you, you can see really obvious the anatomical difference in the appearance of a leaf so those are both leaves doing the same role uh, having the same problem to solve but trying to be the best in their job they're completely adapting to the environment they live in so depending on the environment this would be air and this is definitely water their their anatomy is changing only influenced by the by the environment they live in and then this is the second term we, we mentioned today in the beginning to talk about. It's called canalization. And it's the ability to produce a constant phenotype in spite of variable genetic and or environmental features. This basically means that canalization is a word to explain or a measure to explain how much a species is able to keep up with the genes they have how rigid their genes are and basically how they are resistible to change so basically canalization is the measure for being resistible to the change it can be considered as the complete opposite of a plasticity so on the one side you have plasticity which is the ability of a species to adapt to change and then you have canalization on the other side, which would be ability of a species to stay the way it is, to pass the same identical genes. Identical, not possible, but in the, so nature developed these two, of course, with a specific role. Both have their own. As much as the canalization is good and really useful trait of a organism, or a species negative side of it is would be that if, if species is changing too quickly uh, too much it won't be able to pass the genes onwards so the maybe through generation the species would differ in the greater level than for permitting copulation and onwards so the genes would be too deferred to keep species the same and then of course canalization is not good because it means that if the canalization is too high, the species is not able to cope with the changes in its environment. And the big level of canalization in species is definitely lethal. So both have pros and cons, of course, but in, in the specific uh, level and, uh, and in a strict relationship, they, in combination, they are leading the species to... The, uh, the biggest possible abundance, dispersal, and progress of its species in the number of organisms and its fitness and adaptability to, for survival. I hope I was clear in these three terms we talked about, so plasticity being genotypic and phenotypic and canalization, and I hope we'll see each other in the next lecture of the ecology Thanks for listening. Ciao.